I was at a point where like I was just really trying to create outside of work. Mm -hmm. Like I was just really trying to tap in to my other um, creative ability. But I felt like I kept hitting a wall. Yeah. So I said, Father God, like I want every idea I have to originate from you first. Like help me achieve that. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well then you have to make me your creative director. Mm -hmm. And I dropped my pen. I said, oh my gosh. Wow. I have never heard anyone mm -hmm. talk about God in that way. So Vic, are you happy now? We're here. Yeah? We're you happy? You, fin happy? you finally got what you wanted? The podcast. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, for the past five years, the way that you have been harassing me, like, in the beginning, it was fine, because I'm like, it. you know, like, I was still trying to, like, figure it out, mm -hmm. and I still had so much passion around the show. But then, probably on, like, the third year, I was over it. I was like, this is not for me. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I feel like... God removes his favor over this show and like my gifts as it relates to this show. Mm -hmm. And you were relentless. I was annoying. You were so annoying, <laughs> like to the point where like we would get into arguments and I'm like, You'd I be just, mad at me. I'd be so upset. I'm and like, I'm I don't like, why are, you, why are you upset? Because why are you talking about something that I don't even want to do no more? Mm. You know, like I don't eat, like where do you feel like for you it was coming from? I think God. I think. When God gives you a vision, God will put people around you who will just have a fire to be like, come on, we, we're doing this together. Yeah. Like, let's run together, let's figure it out. How can we make this happen? And we, I remember you telling me, I was, just, I was so excited. And I feel like that excitement hasn't like, it hasn't dwindled. It's just yeah. been like, if anything, it's got, I've just gotten more excited. I'm like, what are we doing? Where's this podcast? And then we would go out and people would be like, you should start a podcast. And I'd be like, the way you would look at me, <laughs> and I would be like, God, why would you have her here when they're saying this? <laughs> over you know? and over again. And then like, there was even times where I'm like, man, I should have never told this girl about this show. <laughs> like, I should have never showed you the decks. I should have never told you about the vision, showed you the guests, all this stuff, because I'm like, you will not let up. I would not let up. You know, and I think that's just a really good segue to like, it's so important who you reveal your dreams yeah. to, you know, because it can either make it, and I feel like you've helped make mm -hmm. this dream happen, or it could break, yeah, you know, not to sound way. cliche, yeah. you know? So I'm just, even though I was upset several times We're and we here. got into arguments, I just want to thank you and God for getting me to this place because I don't think without, you know, your encouragement, the encouragement of my entire circle, my family, mm -hmm. friends, that I would even be here, which is why I'm like so excited that you are putting me in the hot seat yes. right now because I feel like there's no better person to mm -hmm. like interview me and like for us for to have this discussion than you because you've been so close and you've been in the thick of it. You've been there when I've been crying, when I've been upset, when I've had an attitude and you've had to check me, <laughs> like all the things. So thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Of course. And I'm just so grateful to just watch your journey and just to like just see how something started as a seed and an idea from God just come into manifestation. Yeah. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Amen. You know, so tell us, what inspired this podcast? What inspired this? Um, the quick answer is God. Okay. But I'm going to give you the long answer. You want the long naturally. answer? Naturally. Um, so, you know, I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a believer, as a Christian. And um, throughout my childhood, I always went to church. Um, it was kind of like a mandate. It's not because I wanted to, it's because yeah. I had to. Um, and it wasn't until I graduated college in 2016 where I really started to develop my own relationship with Christ. And I didn't, I wasn't even taught to have a relationship, um, but it just, I don't know, I feel like God just brought me to him, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, and in that, as we started to get closer, I started to learn more about who he is, his character, his identity. And growing up in the church, they talk a lot about how God is a provider. Yeah. He's a king of kings. Um, he's a comforter, all of these things. But they kind of um, graze over the fact that he is the ultimate creator, mm -hmm. you know? And it wasn't until, again, I had that relationship and God revealed that to me. Yeah. And he was like, you know, I am the ultimate creator. And he even took me back to Genesis 1-1, where it says, in the beginning, God created. Mm -hmm. And I always like remind people of that because that's the, our first introduction to God, yeah. the fact that he created. And you know, God is so intentional, mm -hmm. right? Like he's very specific about his words. He's very considered when it comes to everything that he says in the Bible to us specifically. Like in that moment, God revealed to me, like, there's a reason why I said this, yeah. you know? And all like of like, you know, first Genesis is really about 
his creation process, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how he created us and the, and the world and so on and so forth. So I found that so beautiful. And I remember it was August, I think it was August 16th, 2017, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Good. I Mm -hmm. wow. I remember the date. Yeah. And I was in Portland at the time. We were both working for Adidas at the time. <laughs> memory <laughs> lane. Memory, yeah, <laughs> we're going all the way back. And I was sitting on my couch. Like, my couch is where I would always pray. I would always journal. And I was at a point where, like, I was just really trying to create outside of work. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just really trying to tap in to my other um, creative abilities and ideas and so on and so forth. But I felt like I kept hitting a wall. Yeah. So I said, Father God, like, I want every idea I have to originate from you first. Like, help me achieve that. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, then you have to make me your creative director. Mm -hmm. And I dropped my pen. I said, oh, my gosh. Wow. I have never heard anyone mm -hmm. talk about God in that way. Yeah. You know, like that was so foreign to me. Mm -hmm. So I wrote down, God is my creative director. And that's when my journey of like really collaborating with God, creating with God started. Mm -hmm. That's not when the idea for the podcast happened. That's when my perspective shift on who God is started to change. Got it. And as I started to move with this perspective and this mindset, my conversation started to change. You know, my conversations with people um, in my life started to become more faith inspired. And we were talking about passion, purpose, and creativity all through the lens of faith. Mm -hmm. And that happened for a good six months from that day. And it wasn't until like, again, six months later, where God was like, I want you to start packaging these conversations and I want you to put it out there in the world in the form of a podcast. That was 2018. And I was like, oof, a podcast. How did you feel? I was kind of like, what? You know, like kind of terrified okay. because I put a lot of pressure on myself when it comes to producing my own thing, putting myself out there. Yeah. And even though, like, I mean, even in this conversation, I'm talking a lot, mm -hmm. like, conversation comes easy to me. Yeah. Um, the way the enemy was convincing me that it was going to be a failure, that it was going to be horrible, like, that I am not articulate enough, that I'm not eloquent enough, yeah. like, all these lies started to fill my mind. But a part of me was terrified. A part of me was also excited, you know? So, I mean, I did it, you yeah, know? I started, I, I, we're here, we're but here. even back then, yeah. I started to um, record episodes, you know? Like, I would record episodes um, in the church of the Bible study we went to. You remember? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> with Dion. And I would literally sit down in the children's ministry section wow. on those little chairs, and I, I, I didn't have this whole setup. Mm -hmm. I just had my phone, <laughs> and I used a voice memo app, wow. and that's how I was recording my podcast. Wow. You know, like, I created a logo, I think, in, like, I don't know, like, in Google slides or whatever and I screenshotted it and I put it up you know I think I have like one or two episodes oh up somewhere goodness. in yeah. the internet abyss um but I kept stopping myself because I felt like it wasn't perfect enough mm. it wasn't good enough you know and I struggle a lot with perfectionism which yeah. I think is one of the reasons why it took me five years mm -hmm. to finally get here let's you talk know? about let's talk about that process right so I think yeah. sometimes we have an idea we take off with it and then time goes by, right? And mm -hmm. we're just like, is this still gonna happen? What's getting in the way, yeah. you know? And then you also you evolve as a person. Right. So just, let's go through this process of like idea to execution, like yeah. everything you were feeling during that time. The reason why it took so long is because of me. Buku is at fault. Um, but also just because whenever God is, and you know this, yeah. like whenever God is calling you to do something, the amount of resistance that the enemy brings <sighs> It's like mental, yeah. you know, like a lot of it is just like the mental um, like blockage that mm -hmm. you feel, you know, like even though, again, this is something that comes naturally to me, I was second guessing myself like no other. Mm -hmm. The amount of imposter syndrome and fear that I had, I was like, I don't know how people are going to respond to this, you know, I don't know if I'm like the right um, type of host, mm -hmm. you know, like that is is suited for yeah. something like this. Like I was just so in my head. Mm -hmm. And because it took so long, I convinced myself and I let the enemy convince me that God is taking his hand off of me, mm -hmm. that he no longer wants this for me, that I procrastinated, God has chosen someone else, he's given this idea to some, you know, like I, and because of that, I threw in the towel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you come in, right? Buku, what are we doing? Buku, where's this? 
I was like, if you talk about this podcast (laughs) one more time, like, I'm just not going to call you no more. You know? I'd be like, we good? So it's podcast. Yeah, you know? So, like, it was just a lot of trial and error. And, like, even though I'm finally launching it now, Mm -hmm. um, I... There was like two times that I've, I I tried to launch it. The first time was, you know, back in 2018 when God mm-hmm. initially told me. And then the second time around was over the pandemic. And this was an interesting one because I think that I made the podcast like my God, mm-hmm. you know, and I put that at the throne of my heart versus putting God at the throne of my heart and allowing God to inform how I launch it and mm-hmm. how I inform it and everything. So I was trying to do it very like interview style. Like yeah. I had like a list of questions mm-hmm. for people and I was trying to be like very like professional about it. So tell me about a time when, you know, like that's how I was trying to do yeah. it. And as I was doing it, it just, it just didn't feel natural, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember God telling me, he was like, what did I tell you the tagline is for this show? And I said, faith inspired conversations. He goes and just converse. Mm. And I was like, oh. Heard you. I was like, oh, like that's all I had to do this whole time, yeah. you know? And like, I still have those five episodes that I recorded. They're literally sitting oh in my, my Google goodness. Drive right now. Um, but I just, you know, it's it's just funny now, like mm-hmm. looking in hindsight, like all I had to do was like sit up with people and just have yeah. a conversation. Um, but again, like even though it took me this long, what I marvel at and what I'm so grateful for as it relates to God is his faithfulness and his patience mm-hmm. and his grace. Yeah. Because even though he probably wanted me to launch this five, four, three, yeah. two years ago, um, he still made everything work together for my good. You yeah. know, five years ago, I didn't have this house. Mm. Five years ago, I didn't have the resources to have yeah. such an amazing production team. Right. Five years ago, I didn't have, you know, the people, like I didn't know some of the people that I know now mm-hmm. um, who are on the show. So I think it just it's a testament to, again, God's faithfulness and the fact that even though sometimes we delay and we procrastinate and we hold ourselves back due to imposter syndrome mm-hmm. and fear, um, he has accounted for all of that. I love that. And I don't know how he does it. Yeah. He just be doing it and mm-hmm. it just be working and I just be grateful. And his hand is just always going to be over you. Yeah. Right. And like he still wants this for you just as much as you want this. And I want right. to ask, like, in those moments that you felt like God's favor wasn't on you, you still kept going. There was like, even when you were like, mm, I'm good, there was something in you that was just like, oh, let me pick this up and try again. Yeah. Okay, I'm over it. Let me pick it up again. You know, and I want to know, like, did God kind of give you confirmation along the way where there, I like to say links from God, but to yeah. be like, all right, maybe like this still can happen. Maybe mm-hmm. it's like this will still come into its fullness, right? So talk about that. God would not stop talking to me about this. Mm-hmm. Even during the, like, it was like you, like, I was so annoyed with him, you know, because I was like, bro, I told you I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But um, when God wants something from, like, for us, when he is passionate about something, he will make sure that he leaves no room for confusion. Mm -hmm. Um, And there were several wings from God. Like, I even remember last year. Um, we were at CultureCon, right? Mm -hmm. It was me, you, and Annie. Mm -hmm. And we had left to go get a bite. And I don't know how it came up, but you always find a way to bring up the podcast. And it was you and Annie, so y'all was just tag teaming me, right? It was two against one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, like, please. You know, I was just trying to, like, keep a, you know, be kind. And be like, hey, I hear you guys. Yeah, Yeah. you're right, whatever. And then we went back to the conference. Mm -hmm. And then um, we went our separate ways. Like, we were just walking around or whatever. And then this girl stops me. She goes, "Um, are you Buku? And I'm like, yes. Yes. (laughs) What's up? (laughs) Like, what do you want? What do I do? And she was like, girl, I knew it was you. I don't know where you've been because I know you, like, kind of, like, went ghost on social. Mm -hmm. But back when you were active on Twitter, I would literally, like, follow your tweets so heavily. The way that you you know, talked about faith and your walk with Christ was so inspiring. She's like, I even have some of your tweets printed out wow. on my board. And till this day, I read those. And she was like, what happened? Like, why aren't you on social? Mm-hmm. And you know, like, yeah. God told me to leave for a little bit. And um, she was like, I just want to affirm you and remind you right now yeah. that 
God wants to use your voice. I don't care if it's a podcast. I don't care if it's a book. You need to use your voice. God has something big planned for you. And I was like, I literally had chills. And she was like crying. You know what I mean? I was like, if this is the only reason why I came to New York That's to go enough. to culture, I hear you. A stranger. You, a stranger. Who, like you don't know. I had no idea she was even following me. Like her name was Imani, you know? And I, and I really hope that she listens to yeah. this at some point. But like, it was... So chills. beautiful. It, it was chills because you guys had just, you know, you. you just harassed me about this podcast. And now I have a stranger, you know, like damn near an angel, yeah. you know, coming to tell me about it, you know. And there's even been times where maybe I, I'm on a panel or something or I'm just I'm just pouring, you know, mm -hmm. um, into someone. And they're like, Buku, like the way that you talk about God and faith and creativity, mm -hmm. the way you just speak in general yeah. is so engaging. Like you should get a podcast. Like mm -hmm. you should, you should write a book. You should do this. And I'm just like, all right, God, you know, like I hear yeah. you. And I think even though there's been times where I have been low when it comes to this thing mm -hmm. and I have felt so discouraged, those winks from God kept you going. He kept me going Man. every single time. How do you feel now, right? Because I know there was that wrestle season of like, I need to start this, I pick it up, I pick it up, I keep going, I stop, right? And you're just like, man, why is this causing so much friction within myself? Mm -hmm. And after you started this podcast, like how does Buku feel, you know? Yeah. <sighs> relieved. Okay. And like, relieved in the sense that all the things that I was scared of, not one. Happened. Happened. And I know I told you this already, but I cannot believe for the past five years, I've been running away from this. Mm -hmm. You know, like running away from something that has brought me so much joy, is bringing me so yeah. much joy, something that will inspire people, something that like brings me closer to God even. Yeah. You know, because there's been times where I don't feel the closest to God. I don't feel like I'm being a quote unquote good Christian. Mm -hmm. And those are reasons why I've even disqualified myself from doing something like this. But yeah. of course it's rooted in Christianity and faith. So I'm like, I'm not the right candidate for this because of the way I'm living or because, you know, I'm not reading my Bible on a daily, you know? So it's just crazy how after all of that, I'm in this space where I'm like, wow, like I'm just like, so God, good. you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I feel so amazing. Yeah. Um, and it, and I'm just grateful, you know, that God kept this for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that. he literally tucked this away. He's like, like, I got you, girl. You know, I got you, yeah. you know? And it, again, like, it took a lot getting here. And I know we've talked about this. We've mm -hmm. talked about everything. But um, I was severely depressed, mm. you know, for, and you were part of that yeah. for a very long time. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that I was trying to find purpose in everything else like because this. I was running away from this, mm. you know? So I was trying to find purpose in my nine to five. Yeah. I was trying to find purpose in different relationships. I was finding purpose. I mean, I even gained a significant amount of weight because I was trying to find purpose in food. Like, you know, like this yeah, just comfort so in, in, all, in all sorts of things. And I kept asking God, like, I would go to God and I'd be like, all right, so what can I do? Like, what else can I do? And he'd yeah. be like, the podcast. I'm like, no, no, no. no. What else? But what else? <laughs> like, besides that, like, I, that's, that's not happening anymore. What else can mm -hmm. I do? You know, and he would use you, Wings from God, and he would speak to me directly and be like, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what got me here. And I, that moment. yeah, I hate the fact that I had to get so low. For but him I, to like bring you back up to be like, yeah. this is what I want. Right. And you can keep experiencing this, but I'm still with you regardless. Right, right. So that's what finally got me to a point where I was like, I'm going to do this thing, yeah. you know, because I think especially when you're in such a low place and you're like dealing with um, heightened levels of like depression and anxiety, yeah. you have to look yourself in the mirror and decide, are you going to continue to put yourself in a position where you're going to, let life happen to you, mm -hmm. you know? And I had to like have a coming to Jesus moment yeah. with myself and be like, Buku, like stop running away from the one thing that is gonna bring you out of this, Man. you know? And I have no idea what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. you know? And I, you know, I always say this, obedience is up to me, the outcome is up, up to God, God. but clearly there's something on the other side of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really excited to one, experience it for myself mm -hmm. and have other people experience because our obedience is never just about tied us. To us. It's tied to so many people, so many souls, and right. like 
be in this internet era where like someone in Malaysia could watch this. Right. <laughs> you know, I don't you watch like Malaysia, but like you just never know who this is going to go to and how right. you can change your life. And I feel like there's a lot of bukus who feel like in this world are like, God has told me to do something or there's something that I'm passionate about, but mm -hmm. like they can't take that next step. And right. so what would you say to them, you know, to get to the other side, like, listen, there's so much that, you know, life God has for you, but like, just, just go, just go. I, I think I would say to them, trust that God always has your best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's not like what I love. And me and Maurice talk about this. Maurice is one of my friends, mm -hmm. but, um, it's not like God was asking me to like become a doctor or like do something that <laughs> yeah, I would that you I mean, didn't want to do that I didn't want to do. Uh -huh. Like God was literally asking me to do the one thing that I really love and enjoy, mm -hmm. and it's having conversations um, with Him in mind, mm -hmm. you know. And I would just tell those people whatever the enemy, your doubt, your fear is convincing you of is such a lie. Yeah. Like after the first episode I recorded here. I went upstairs and I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Wow. And I cannot believe that I've been running away from this this entire time. Mm. Like, I'm, like I'm, and I'm telling anyone who's listening, like, once you finally take that first step, it is going to be like you are opening the door of, like, your dreams. Like, yeah. I, I just see you opening a door and it's just like, spar like sparkles, mm -hmm. if you will, you know? Like, it just looks like, tale movies. Oh, yeah. you know? And all your fears, your doubt, the devil, like all the naysayers in, in mm -hmm. your life will finally be silenced once you open that door. Man. I haven't heard the doubt. I haven't heard the fear. I haven't heard the imposter syndrome yeah. since I opened that door. Wow. Like that will bring me to tears because for the past five years, the way that, like the volume has been up on mm -hmm. the fear. And, and, and it just keeps keeps going up and yeah. up because I'm not doing anything to silence it. Right. If anything, I'm partnering with the fear mm. and I'm partnering with the doubt and the imposter syndrome. I'm on their team. Yeah. There's no, the only person on the other side is God. is God and like the people around me, yeah. you know, but that like that team, you mm -hmm. know, the negative team yeah. is so loud. Mm -hmm. But the minute you open that door and you say yes to God and you say yes to your purpose, you will be so relieved to know that everything that you have been convincing yourself of does not exist. Man. It's literally a facade, mm. you know? So I would just tell them, trust that God has your best interest in mind and just say yes, open that door yeah. and everything that you has been bogging you down just disappears. Yeah. How has God influenced your creative journey? I actually yeah. gotten to know him as a creator, and now you have this new relationship and perspective on him. Yeah. Um, I see God as my teammate, mm. you know? I see him as, like, my, my... I call him, like, my creative partner in crime, especially as it relates to, like, the Holy Spirit, you know? I'm not going to get into the theology of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, but he... Like, God put his best in me, and that's, that's him. Mm -hmm. And ever since 2017, right, like, when he revealed himself to me as this creative director... There is nothing that I do without prayer, mm -hmm. without involving him. And there are times where, yes, I lean on my own understanding or I try and do things my own way. Um, but prayer is integral to yeah. what I do. Faith is integral to what I do. Obedience is also um, a huge part of my creative process. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said in that prayer in 2017, is like I want every idea I have to originate from God first. I love that. Um, yeah, because that scripture that God revealed to me, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, eyes have not seen, mm -hmm. ears have not heard, and no mind has imagined. Um, and that is like an anchor scripture for me. Yeah. You know, like I use it in my everyday. And when I think about like creativity, and especially like the space we're in as a culture, as a society, yeah. everyone's trying to create what's next. Right. You know, everyone is trying to create the next best thing. And I think... I was also in a space where I thought I could do it on my own. Mm. You know, even after God revealed himself to me as his creative director, like I, there, there was moments where I tapped into my humanity and I was just like, mm. I can do this. I can figure I this out. This. I got this, you yeah. know. And I always go back to 1C29, 1 Corinthians 2.9, and it's like, if I want to create what's next, if I want to create something that is impactful, that is really going to resonate, that is really going to disrupt mm -hmm. what we, like, no, right now, I have to partner with the only person who has the foresight and the insight, mm. and that is Christ. 
Hello. You know, like God is the only person. Like before, it's even like in the little things, right? Like before I give a presentation at work, I say, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak through me. Mm -hmm. I pray that you allow these words to resonate with those who are receiving it. I pray, Father God, that where I fall short, you will step in. Mm -hmm. Because my dad always says, you never know what happens between your lips and someone else's ears. So there are gonna be moments where I do fall short in this presentation or whatever I'm doing, but Holy Spirit, that's where you come in. And that's where you manifest your perfection and your glory and your greatness. So going back to your question, like how God has um, influenced, you know, my creative process, he is in every single detail, you know, and it's to a point where like, if you hire me, you know, God's coming too. God's coming too. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one thing the Lord told me. He was like, the way that you will continue to be elevated, the way you will continue to be in these rooms is if When you get into these rooms, you do not leave me at the door. Mm. You know, when you sit at these tables, you put me at the head, you know? Um, So I don't ever want to lean on my own understanding. Mm. I don't ever want to seek my own will or feel like I am the God of an idea or I'm the creator. Like, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Even this show, I'm a steward over it. You know, it ain't even mine. You know, I think that's another thing, too. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about stewardship. Let's talk about stewardship. Let's talk about... When God gives you something, one, it's such an honor. It's and such a privilege. A, it's a privilege and an honor yeah. that God would take a, a snippet of his mind and be like, and, and give it to you <laughs> and say, I trust you with this idea. Yeah. I trust you to see it through. I think that's another thing that brought me to finally launching the show mm. is realizing that like there's a level of responsibility that comes when God reveals something to you, yeah. you know? And once you understand that it's an honor mm-hmm. and it's a privilege, mm-hmm. the way you handle that, the way you steward it it's is so different. so much care and so much intention. You know what I'm saying? You know, because God could have given this to anyone. Anybody, but he chose Buku. But he chose Buku. Yeah. He chose Vic. Mm-hmm. He chose whoever is listening to this or watching yeah. this right now, you know? So... Yeah, for me, like, that's how I, I mean, that's a long-winded answer, but that's really how I incorporate and involve Christ in my creative process. Do you feel like your relationship with Christ has changed or evolved over time from getting to know him as a creator, um, launching this show, and then, like, just in this new season? Like, how has your relationship with Christ evolved over time? It has evolved. There's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, Like I said, I'm a perfectionist, and the bar of, like, uh, success for me is very high. Mm -hmm. It's actually very unrealistic. Um, So I kind of sometimes put that KPI or that bar on my relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not in my word X amount of days or this and the third, like I start to feel like I'm failing God, like Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough or he's not gonna bless me with certain things. And I think throughout this five year process of me finally getting here, he has constantly tried to like get that out of me, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm in a place now where, I feel like my relationship with God is more chill. Mm. You know, it's not as like uh, strict, if you will. Got you it. know, like he's really my homie. Yeah. You know, he's like my best friend. Yeah. And, you know, even when you think about us, we don't talk the same way every day. That's real. Sometimes you know? it's a text, sometimes it's a voice note, sometimes right. it's FaceTime. It just depends. Exactly. And God's the same way. Like, just chat, just chat to me. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so I think that, I've just learned how to like be more chill mm-hmm. as it relates to him, you know, and just realize there's different ways to converse with him as well. Like even what we're doing right now is a form of prayer and conversation, mm-hmm. you know? So I, it doesn't necessarily have to be, be me on my knees all the time yeah. praying, you know, or in church praying, like this is a form of worship. So mm-hmm. I think as I've journeyed with Christ and as I've, um, been through like the ups and downs and the child air of trials and errors of like trying to launch this show, I have learned the heart of God more and that. his compassion and his grace and his gentleness mm. and his patience. And that has made me realize that like God is not as tough as I think he is. Mm-hmm. You know, like he does definitely has like a level of um like he has a standard that right. he wants us to like operate at, but he also understands our weaknesses and where we're at. And where we're at. He understands our nature. Mm-hmm. So he's not expecting perfection out of me because he didn't make me to be perfect. Yeah. He made me to just be, be 
And I love that through this journey that um, while this show is going to bless other people, it's also going to be a blessing to you. Right. You know, and just how you see God and how it's going to continue to evolve and continue to change as this yeah. expands. And who knows where it's going to go. I'm so proud of you. I'm so Thank proud you. of your obedience. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be able to witness your journey. I'm excited to see where this goes. Amen. Like, the people who are going to watch it and just be like, man, like, my life changed from that one conversation. Yeah. You know? So, like, go sis, go girl. I'm going girl. I'm, I'm going girl. Yeah. So I'm excited to know, like, what are your intentions? Like, what are your dreams, you know, behind this show? Like, where do you want to, yeah. what's, what's Buku's wildest dream? Like, where do you want to see it? <sighs> this is a... Think big. Think big. Think big. Yeah. Nothing is off limits. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, after the first episode I recorded, I was like, God, I want this to be my daily. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to wake up every morning and create a world around this show. You know, like I think the show, and God has always told me this, that the show is the entry point to all the other things that I've wanted to do. That's my intention and like okay. my goal. I, it's like a part of me is like scared to be specific. Don't be scared. I know, I know. So I can't wait to watch this back and be like, Buku. Right. Remember it when it happened. Yeah, yeah. Like I would love for this show to um, take off in mm -hmm. whichever way God sees it taking off. Okay. You know, like I'm not saying that it has to you know, make X amount of money and be here, this yeah. and the third. But I just want it to not just feel like a hobby or a side project, you know? Like, I want it to be a core piece of what I do. Um, and I think, like, I spend so much time building the dreams of other people. I want to really have this be something where I'm in, I'm spending majority of my time mm. building this up for myself, yeah. you know, and take all the things that I've learned um, in my jobs and yeah. in corporate and apply it here. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to bless people, yeah. you know, I wanted to, I wanted to really show like, cause you know, I always say this, mm -hmm. that God has the worst marketing team, the worst PR team, you know, because they paint him in this light of like being like a dictator and yeah. someone who's super judgmental. And I prayed that this, shifts people's perspectives um, and, and, and broadens it and mm -hmm. opens people's heart up to like who God really is, which is why like I use people like yourself and the other guests who are on the show to really show the heart of Christ, yeah. you know, because he's dope. He's yeah, hella cool, he's bro. Like he's mad cool. And yeah. I just want people to, I want people to rock with that and hear yeah. that and just be blessed, you know, like, I remember back in, I think it was 2018, I was um, on my way back from my birthday trip. I was coming back to Portland and I was just journaling. Like I love talking to God in the, mm -hmm. on the plane. You know, it just feels like I'm close just to Just like heaven. no distractions, no yeah, service. Exactly. So I was like journaling and I was just journaling um, a prayer of gratitude. You know, mm -hmm. I was just so thankful. And I started crying, you know? And of course it wasn't tears of sadness, it was tears of joy and mm -hmm. gratitude. And I was just like, God, like I want people to experience what I experience with you on a daily, yeah. you know? And I think like the journey of God and who he is is to be experienced, not necessarily like always talked about. Like you can talk to someone yeah. all day about who God is, but until they experience him for, th for themselves, they won't truly like understand what we're talking mm -hmm. about at times. So in that moment, I said, God, please help me create a way to um, help people experience you and know you. Mm -hmm. And this is that. He answered your prayer. Amen. He answered Amen. You. He's going to do it exceedingly Amen. and abundantly. And I'm, I'm just so excited to see where this goes. Yeah. You know, like, you're so passionate about this. So I'm just, I'm excited for you. Thank you. I feel like you. you're walking in purpose and you're just, it's shining. Finally. Finally. So we're here. Yeah. We're here. So Thank you, sis. I appreciate it. I love, you. I love you more. Thank you for harassing me. I appreciate of course, it. Of course. <laughs> so let's I close this out in it. prayer. Okay. Oh, oh you're, you're, yeah. I'm praying. All right, because mm -hmm. I'm in the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. Okay. okay. Um, Father God, I just want to thank you so much for this moment. Thank you for your faithfulness, your patience, um, the way that you have just kept me and you've held me in your arms, Father God. Thank you for bringing me to this time where I'm finally launching this thing and Amen. I'm doing what you've called me to do and I'm being obedient and I'm walking in step with you. Um, I rebuke the spirit of fear, of Amen. procrastination, of doubt and imposter syndrome. Thank you for showing me who I really am because I'm finally in a place where I'm doing this show, Father God. Um, thank you for silencing um, every negative thought 
thought um, and every negative um, perspective, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for exceeding my expectations as it relates to this show and just doing the impossible for me, Father God. At this point, obedience has been up to me and I've done that, but now it's in your hands. The Amen. ball is in your court, Father God, and the outcome is up to you. Um, I just want to pray for everyone who listens to this show. I pray that you would bless them. I pray, Father God, that they would be inspired, Lord, that they would be encouraged, that this speaks specifically to what they are going through, God, um, and the Holy Spirit just changes their lives, Lord, changes their perspective and their heart posture, Father God. Amen. I pray for everyone who has a dream who has an idea, who has gifts, Father. I pray that you would give them the spirit of stewardship. You would give them the spirit of obedience and of faithfulness, Lord, so that they can see it through, Lord. Um, and I just pray that you would silence their fears as well and their doubts and um, anything that is holding them back, Father. I just thank you for just being so good to us, just being like such a fire dad and um, an amazing friend, an amazing collaborator. Um, and thank you for being our creative director. Hello. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus and we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so proud of you, sis. Thank and you. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to see where this goes. Amen. And that's a wrap.